Kenya is the latest African country to introduce health HIV self-testing kits in a bid to get more people to know their status and seek treatment. The government estimates that there are as many as 500,000 people in Kenya who are HIV positive but don't know it. Lenny Ruvaga reports from Nairobi. 25-year-old Lucy Wanjiku heard about the new HIV self-testing kit and has decided to try it out. The kits went on sale at private pharmacies in Kenya in May. The pharmacist first explains the test, the possible outcomes and information about public hospital referrals before administering it. According to Wanjiku, the self-testing kit will help reduce stigma. Because it's at your privacy, no one will see it. I um, don't think there's much stigma to that. And also, uh, like the pharmacist didn't get to see my results, so they don't even know if it's positive or it's negative. That is my secret to my heart. There are two variations of the self-testing kit, the oral swab and the blood test. The blood sample kit contains three bottles, which accelerate the disintegration of blood. It also has a test device pouch and a lancet to draw blood. The blood sample test is sold for about $8, while the oral swab retails at $9. The government has trained pharmacy practitioners like Dr. Miriam Mugure to administer the tests. It's a very good initiative. We thank the government for such a thing. But I think the price is a bit costly, as much as it's going, I'm going to carry it home. So if they can reduce the pricing so that everyone can access it. Esther Chude is the CEO at the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, PSK, which has partnered with the government to roll out the self-testing kits. Our challenges have been twofold. One is pricing. It being in the early stages, we do not have the volumes, therefore the price is a prohibitive to majority of the people. Secondly, we need to be able to get the message out there and we're working with partners to inform the public. The Ministry of Health says as many as a quarter of Kenyans infected with HIV don't know their status. The main reason for introducing HIV self-testing is to reach this unreached population, mainly men and young people. The government hopes to roll out the HIV self-testing kits in public hospitals later this year. Lenny Ruvaga for VOA News, Nairobi. People living with HIV AIDS are faced with challenges such as staying healthy and affording the cost of treatment. But organizations like the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation and some government funded programs enable patients with limited or no financial resources access to the care they need. Josephine Nabukenya is one such patient. She was born with HIV AIDS in Uganda in 1994 and is now not only a healthy adult, but also an advocate for children living with HIV AIDS. She is also an ambassador for the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. Josephine, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. It's Thank so good you. to have you here. Yeah. First of all, let me ask you, what has been your experience like uh, living with HIV AIDS in Uganda growing up with the virus? Uh, first and foremost, like many children or adolescents or youth living with HIV, I contracted uh, the virus through my mother uh, during her pregnancy. And uh, from the very beginning, I never knew my status until I was uh, 10 years old. So I read a letter I was never supposed to read and it disclosed my family status. But after, after a very short time of two years, my mother disclosed to me. And I also had to disclose to her that I read the letter and I kept it a secret. I never told anyone that I read the letter. So we had to seek medication, of course, at uh, a hospital known as uh, Macquarie University John Hopkins Research Collaboration. Muju in Kampala, and that's where we were introduced uh, to the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. My mother kept it a secret uh, for, for the very first time, not to disclose to me, because uh, she was uh, protecting me and my family from the stigma and discrimination that did exist in Uganda by that time. And stigma is indeed a, a tough challenge that uh, people living with HIV are faced with every day. What has been your experience? Do you, do you think that things have improved? Well, of course, you, whenever you talk about HIV, you cannot forget stigma or Absolutely. discrimination. Yes. So, and personal, I've experienced uh, discrimination at school after, because uh, I always share my life experience openly in media and to different uh, conferences. And so I've 
children have learned about my status and at one point I did experience discrimination at school but uh, there's been a slowly like it's a gradual process and there's been improvement it's not like the way it used to be way back in 2000 in the early 2000 so there's been a slowly improvement and uh, that is attributed to the different outreaches that different organizations have been able to do personally i do school and community outreach yes. and we do this to give out right information about hiv and aids mm -hmm. and in the community outreach we spice it up with um testing services now let me ask you this question uh, i just wanted to have your take on how the youth react to your messages as an ambassador because you as you say, you do uh, the outreach in communities. What is the reaction, especially, particularly with regards to the youth? Well, uh, they do listen to me because okay. I'm a fellow youth. So that's yes, the one exactly. thing. They will see me and they'll be like, oh, she's like us okay. in our age mate. So they will do listen to me. And sometimes they need um, more, like, more knowledge and more scientific knowledge. So whenever even us youths go out to the community and do the sensitization, we have other healthy workers behind us. Okay. So in case there is anything, like maybe they think, maybe they need more clarity from an older person, they'll always be there. But I've always had a great experience because they do listen to me since I'm a fellow youth. Now, you're in Washington for your advocacy yeah. work and uh, in, in particular to talk about what could be a human cause of a potential budget cut to HIV AIDS research uh, and programming. Tell us about this. Uh, what it, obviously, it's very important to you. What is the message? Who are you talking to and, and your hopes? Uh, well, we've come so far in the fight against HIV and AIDS. And personally, I would not be speaking to you right now, or maybe I would not be this healthy and I would not have achieved whatever success I've achieved in life if I didn't get the treatment and the support that I did get way back when I was growing up uh, from different organizations like the, like the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation and other organizations. And all these organizations are funded through the US government. Mm -hmm. So I would say that um, without the support that I did get, and I would not be the person I am today. And you know, you, sometimes you just see figures, but there are people behind those figures. Absolutely. And right now in the fight against HIV and AIDS, we are really looking towards ending HIV and AIDS uh, uh, in 2030. So we would not wish to have any single dollar or any, sing, any single like, shilling or amount cut from the budget because we are targeted to ending it in 2030. We would love to see more money put into the programs in order to achieve the goal. So quickly, before we wrap, what are your hopes? Well, um, as a youth living with HIV, I would not wish it to any other person. So my hope is to end HIV and AIDS in children. That's, that would be my first goal in children uh, to ensure that there is uh, elimination of mother to child transmission and to all children born with HIV to ensure that they are started on treatment. If we have that set in place, we will have a free generation coming up. Josephine, you're such a brilliant and beautiful voice and a powerful voice indeed. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome. And that was Josephine Nabukenya. She is an advocate for children living with HIV AIDS with the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation.